thank you again for joining us uh, today on this. Um, of course, uh, it's just um, a lot of um, things going on, especially with you guys over there you know, in Ukraine. But um, let's um, understand uh, what's your name and where are you joining this call from? Oh, my name is Isaac, and I'm joining from Kiev, Erpin, Oblak. Okay, what's the situation? I mean, obviously, we can see that we can't see you very well. So uh, where exactly are you at the moment? Okay, so uh, right now, uh, in the house where we, where we live, I was initially at the basement, but I, we have a lot of people there, so I had to excuse myself and uh, just to have just to make this call uh, but I was asked by the house manager to switch off the lights because uh, we are hearing uh, that uh, the Russian troops are already here uh, so we don't want to draw any attention right now um, so that's it okay so did you try making your way out of um, Kiev before Hello? you got up? I can hear you did you get did you try making your way out of Kiev and what was the situation when you tried if indeed you oh, you, oh yes I I did try I did try several times leaving Kiev uh, but to no avail where I am right now there is no way I, I can order a taxi and there is no bus there's no movement at all so I and my friends have been trying to see uh, to make way but uh, it's um, it's impossible. We've not been able to to leave where we are right now. So we've been here since yesterday. All right. So like you said, it's it's you and your friends. Um, how many of you Nigerians are in the building as we speak? We are we are seven at at the moment. Seven oh, of us. Okay. Have you been able to contact other people? Maybe your friends who don't live in the house. Maybe neighbors or something like that. Uh, we do have uh, just uh, the seven Nigerians here, the seven of us, we are living here. This is where we live. And then we have Ukrainians as well. So we have Ukrainians who joined us uh, yesterday. All right. So we've been hearing, uh, we've also been having uh, reports um, of the fact that people get to the border and then they're turned back. Um, did, that, did you experience any of such? I, I have friends. I have uh, friends and I'm keeping in touch with uh, some of them who have been to Lviv and they are heading towards the border. Uh, but I've not been able to contact any to know if they've been, uh, if they are in Poland right now, because what we, what we are hearing is that uh, uh, when they get to the border, you have to submit your passport and then you'll be allowed to stay for 15 days. And then after 15 days, you will have to return. Um, so probably after now, I'll try to get in touch with uh, some of my colleagues and friends to see if they, are, if they have been able to enter Poland successfully. All right. Well, we also had reports of um, racial profiling. Did any of that happen to you? Did oh, no, you... I, did, I did not experience such. Oh, okay. But did you get any, did you get any um, reports or did anybody mention that to you? No, no, I, I didn't. I didn't hear anything like this. Okay. Um. So again, uh, let me just hold you there for a bit. Uh, we have other people joining uh, the conversation at the moment. Again, this is a live channel television chat uh, with Nigerians uh, abroad, some in Ukraine, some in Poland, and also some in Nigeria. Um. We have uh, Dr. Victor Vamishay. He's joining us uh, from Abuja. Uh, we have Dr. Tade Omotosho. He's joining us from Poland, and Timothy Adigbile, who is joining us. Uh, from Kiev. Timothy, uh, let's uh, get to hear your own experience. Um, again, just give us a background. What have you experienced so far uh, since all of this uh, has started? Okay, can you hear me very well? Yes, please, I can hear you, Timothy. Thank you, Thank you for the opportunity. So um, I'm currently in Lviv right now. I'm based in Lviv. And the situation in Ukraine has been quite tense and very tough especially from people coming from the Eastern Axis and Southern Axis. We in the West and the Western cities like Lviv, Chernobyl and Uzhgorod, they've been kind of relatively calm. But because of the traffic that of people coming into, it's been a bit like frantic. Currently now, students and Nigerians are trying to make their way out of Lviv through the Polish border. But there are several points of crossing but, but they are not really letting the Nigerians live through all the points. Currently, there's only one point out of those seven that is still living, is still allowing people to live 
computers. That's one challenge. So people that have gone to other points, and you know how far the border is. So they went there and they trekked for maybe one hour, two hours on getting to the border. Now they could not enter. They could not pass through. So now it, they're basically like stranded and have to walk back to civilization. And now the issue is that they can't get vehicles to take them back to the city or take them to another border crossing. So it's quite tough and it's quite challenging. And some people have been able to beg good Samaritans to help. Or imagine you are in a group of 20, you cannot really get vehicles to take 20 people. So, and you won't want to leave some people behind. And so it's been very tough for them. We have some students and some foreigners that have been able to actually cross to Poland. And they are also waiting to be like, they are also waiting to be taken to um, the, waiting to be taken to the airport and also to be processed. But most of the people didn't want to leave yesterday night. Like now, for example, someone left around maybe 9, 8 p.m. and the person arrived at 6 a.m. They literally walked throughout the whole night just because of the fact that there was huge traffic. So they walked for about 15 kilometers. And on getting there, they had to wait for extra two hours on getting there before they could enter and before they could pass through. So in the city, the situation is calm, actually. There is no shelling going on in Lviv right now. Everything is calm. There are all the amenities are working. There's food in the stores. You can like, go by. But if you're coming from a different city, it's going to be tougher because there aren't places to stay. Hotels, hostels, like accommodations have been booked. So it's basically like, once you come, you have to go to the border. And now the border is congested and the border is not letting people pass like very freely. So that's quite frantic. So now the advice to some people in cities that are safe is that they should remain for a while. Let the, let the decongestion happen and they should also still come. But if okay, you don't have any choice, you, you can still come around. But also like the Nigerian community has been rallying around and trying to see how we can help, how we can relocate people, how we can provide advice. And but there's so much we can do from this side. We also have need help from the other side. And okay, there have been some helps that the Nigerians in Poland have actually been very helpful, but we've not really gotten like official assistance from like the Nigerian commission in Poland and some, and also the embassy in, in Kiev, they have not been so on top of it as we would like. Though so we expect it being in the Nigerian embassy, but they could do better because if your country is at the border crossing, it will help to make things quite faster. You are muted. Any contacts? Have there been any contacts, uh, you know, with the embassy uh, so far? Okay. Yeah, there have been contacts severally. People, some people have been designated to speak with them and relay information back. But like now, the embassy in Kiev, they, they can't do anything to help. The only thing they've said so far is that remain calm. Hmm. If don't go to areas that you feel will affect your safety and just try to protect yourself. That's the only thing they've actually said. Then on the Nigerian end, there have been some there has been some chatter from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that they are working on some sort of evacuation. We don't know where, we don't know how, but that's what we've heard. Then from the Polish end, there there have also been some like Nigerian, maybe not officials now, but like some Nigerians that have been like helping out in the whole relocation process and providing like their addresses. For people to use for documentation at the border and stuff like that and just trying to give assistance in the way they can but from the embassy it's basically be it's basically just take care of yourselves we can't really help you now but we hope you are fine all right um of course uh, that hope is uh, what will keep uh, almost everybody alive uh, hopefully and everyone will be fine but um let's uh I'll quickly get to Dr. Tadi uh, Momotosha, who is you know, on the other end of the border that's in Poland this time around, uh, waiting and you know, hopefully that you know, people would come in and he could uh, be, be of help. Um, Dr. Tadi, what's the situation from your own uh, point? Are people crossing in? What's the situation? What's uh, going on at the borders as we speak? Yeah, thank you, Victor, for, for having me. 
Yeah, okay. On, on our part, at the Nigerians in Diaspora um, Organization Poland, we are on standby and we are willing to, you know, help as many people that succeed in, you know, crossing over to, to Poland. We've been providing addresses. Um, you know, I've personally given out my, you know, my phone number. So, you know, people can reach me directly from the, you know, from the border. However, the challenge we have is that, um, you know, it's been quite difficult to even get to the border. You know, I spoke to um, a student this morning alongside 30 of her colleagues. They were literally stopped by the Ukrainian um, military, um, you know, at the, mili at the Ukrainian um, um what do you call it um border. border you know they were not able to actually leave ukraine you know completely to get to the polish border so you know i think that's a major challenge we we're having and i think it would be really helpful if the nigerian embassy in in ukraine can actually find a way they can assist these nigerians to get to the polish border you know we are on ground as i speak to you i'm three hours away from the border and, uh, you know, we'll be willing to do whatever we can to make sure we get as many of them that are able to cross to this side to get over to town. We're going to be providing transport by, you know, tonight and tomorrow. Um, we have accommodation available. And I just I just spoken to the consular, the Nigerian embassy consular here as well. And I think they are also willing to support, um, you know, so we're, we're on ground to help. I've, I've had I've spoken to a number of people today. Uh, but I haven't been able to reach anyone who has successfully crossed over to get to Poland, you know, so if, if there's anybody out there that is able to, you know, confirm that they are already within the borders of Poland, we are willing to get them over to the city and get them, you know, uh, uh, settled in. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good that you mentioned because I was going to ask you, you know, what, uh, as it stands, how many people have you been able to um, you know, help move, or how many have been able to cross from Ukraine into Poland? Uh, but yeah. uh, you, you already an answered that. Um, so I'll hold you there for a bit and uh, go go over to Dr. Victor Bamishai, um, you know, who is joining us from Abuja. He used to be the President Association uh, Student Association uh, at a point in Ukraine. Uh, Dr. Victor, what's the situation? I mean, you were in Ukraine when uh, there was a lot of issues going on, especially with the Crimea uh, um, um, situation. What was crossing over from, you know, Crimea, because you had to move from Crimea, I think, to Lviv or thereabouts. What was the situation then? How easy was it? And are there any similarities with what, you know, was witnessed then to what is going on now? Uh, well, um, I think uh, the situation now is more dire. It's uh, more uh, complicated. And, uh, and it's difficult now because then when we're crossing from Crimea into the mainland and such, and as such, uh, it was easier for the Ukrainians to take us in uh, and also for the Russians who were at the uh, Kherson border to allow us in. Uh, but now you're dealing with uh, people crossing from Ukraine into uh, the European Union, right? Uh, a, a European Union country. And so the, the dynamics are a bit more different uh, uh, then we had, uh, it was about 28 hours uh, by train uh, from Crimea to, to, to Lviv that I moved to, and that's where people are moving to right now. Uh, but, you know, it was a train. At least you knew you could sit in the train and then arrive, and then arrive. Uh, but now people get to walk uh, from Lviv, you know, for two hours to the border and uh, are not even sure of what they are uh, of what of what their fate would be, uh, I'm aware that uh, certain people might find it easier if, for instance, they've had a European Union uh, visa before, uh, and it would be more difficult for those who just have a passport. Uh, but like uh, those, uh, the guy, uh, the, uh, Dr. Timothy from Lviv said, uh, we need the Nigerian embassy uh, to speak to the neighboring countries. You know, countries like Slovakia, uh, like um, Czech Republic. Uh, like um, uh, Poland, and also um, there's this one more that that just uh, went off the top of my head now. If we can speak to them and send, you know, um, representatives to these borders, it will be easier to, uh, you know, to ease movement. Because again, uh, the idea of movement is also for identify those who are coming in and also, you know, to be responsible for them. Uh, because as much as it's an humanitarian crisis, 
Europeans do not joke with uh, identification. And so it will be easy, it will be much easier if we have uh, Nigerian representatives at these borders helping. And so um, for Dr. Daniel, uh, I know a few Nigerians who have been able to cross over and I will be in touch uh, with him. He's been doing a very good job uh, since his uh, inception, since he came in as, as the chairman of the Nigerian diaspora in Poland. And so for anybody who is in Ukraine or who might be watching now, he's a very good resource person uh, to, to reach now. And like he has told you, he's moving from, from, uh, from uh, Warsaw right now to go to the border himself. So he's, he's going to be leading from the front the day to, to, you know, to, help the, uh, to, to help people coming in. Uh, and for those who are in Ukraine, uh, the advice would be, uh, be around people. And you know, many, many Nigerian students in Ukraine do not actually speak Russian or Ukrainian at all. And so this is a time to be around students uh, in groups, don't, don't be isolated. And, and the idea is that many Nigerian students like to live in flats. And so that means sometimes they are probably the only Nigerian or probably the only group of uh, foreigners within their flat. And so this is a good time to go to the hostels uh, or you know, be in communication with your universities. There are many buildings uh, in Ukraine that have uh, uh, bomb cars, right? Where you can uh, be uh, bomb proof, right? Where you can stay for uh, and be safe. Uh, I think like uh, Mr. Engineer Isaac had, uh, mentioned earlier, the house where he is now, there's a bunker and he's in a community of people he trusts and that can take care of him. And so that's essential at this time. And so uh, hostels uh, stay, are, are, are stay with people. And if you go to the border, please don't go alone. It's, it's quite a... Um, all right, I think um, network is uh, hampering Dr. Victor Bamishai from uh, One can do it for now. But in terms of comparison, did, did you lose me? Yeah, we lost you for a bit. Uh, but yeah. Uh, let me, yeah, let me just hold you for a bit. Let me take some comments from our social media streams. Um, I can see a lot of comments coming in. Ezekiel Holo Michael says, um, uh, what is, there's a lot of food shortage, I think he's trying to say. Uh, but uh, Zara says we are stuck here in Tenopi, no means of transportation to move to Lviv. Um, another one again says, um, well, there's just a, a portfolio of messages coming in pretty much, uh, very much. Uh, someone is even talking about the the, the transportation. Uh, but um, Dr. Timothy, let me ask you, I mean, for those who might even have the opportunity to, you know, access transportation, uh, what is the cost? At, at, at what cost do they access transportation at this point in time? Okay, so we've had varying reports, but like from Kiev to Lviv now, we've had reports of about like $40 to come, $30, $50 approximately right now. It's been cheaper in some places. And also some, some have even said inflated costs. Like I had a report from a student. He said that they were trying to extort $1,000 from him to come to Lviv. So, you know, it gets that, it gets kind of crazy at a point in time but it's around 40 to $50 right now to come. And when you are in Lviv, to be able to get to the border also, you're paying close to 20 to $30 approximately to get there if you're taking a cab or you're taking a bus to get to the border. Uh, speaking about uh, experiences, uh, you seem to be in a way, I mean, we can't even see you at all. So how are you surviving? Because uh, if your lights are off, um, how, 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 how stuck? Is your is your reservoir because it seems you cannot go out if you can't even turn on your light? Uh, how stuck are how stuck are you in terms of food and water and, and supplies? How long do you see this continuing for? Hello. Yeah, Fortune, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, how long I don't know, uh, but I have um, I have food to, to sustain at least for a few days. Um, but I really don't know how long this will last. And I, I just hope that it doesn't pass this week because I don't know how. Okay, let me just go. Um, I'm not in Ukraine. Okay. Um, uh, my younger sister is, and I've been communicating with her uh, for the past few days, you know, trying to, in fact, before things got to this point, we're trying to get her a ticket. Uh, because prior to that, we are waiting for, you know, Nigeria to give the confirmation or, you know, give a statement saying Nigerians in Ukraine, 
it's time for you to leave. You know, that's just what we're waiting for. So that, you know, in case of necessity, you know, if you have to go back, you have the backing of the government, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, unfortunately, uh, it got to this point where people had to run away from Ukraine, you know, and uh, initially she was in a, bun in a bunk, I think a, a, a metro station. They were camped there waiting for a train and they couldn't get one. They had to go back home. And I've been speaking to you, the latest developments coming in from Ukraine, uh, talking to some Nigerian students, some Nigerians who are uh, stranded for a bit, uh, in Ukraine. Our technology correspondent is online speaking with a few of them and he has the latest. Let's go over to him now, Big Tim Mathias. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Mamarachi, as well as Millicent. Like you said, I mean, it's uh, just so much going on, uh, you know, and I'll be monitoring that as well online. We're having the Zoom meeting right now with Nigerians in Poland, um, in Ukraine, uh, you know, some who have been in Poland before and are now back in Nigeria. But uh, it's just been a, a potpourri of conversation and, you know, and reactions as well. Uh, so the Zoom is streaming as well on our Facebook page right now. It's also streaming on YouTube, so uh, people can go watch and they're dropping comments. People are complaining uh, about their inability to get tickets, you know, to get uh, transportation from one point to the other. Uh, but um, just before you came to me now, I was speaking uh, with Fortune Agu, who was telling us about uh, what uh, is going on uh, with his sister, who is currently in Ukraine. Uh, they've been trying to um, get her uh, flight tickets to come back to Nigeria. But um, let's, I, I think it's just best we hear from Fortune. Uh, Fortune, so again, uh, like you were telling us uh, just moments ago, what was the situation uh, when you tried to get your sister out of um, uh, the country? Um, I think it was already a bit too late uh, because we wanted her to fly out um, today, uh, but we couldn't get flights. And, you know, by the time we woke up on Thursday, it was a whole different situation. People were leaving. Uh, Ukrainian um, citizens were already running out of the country. Uh, as of now, she's on her way to Romania. I know a lot of Nigerians are heading towards uh, 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 Lviv so they can get to Poland but she couldn't get a ticket to go on to Lviv and the train that arrived was heading towards uh, I think they call it Rakiv or something and that goes to Romania so she had to jump on that train the last time I spoke to her she was like there were so many people at the train station to even get into the train is a problem so you could have the money to buy the tickets but you can't even get into the train. And I was on a Twitter um, 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 space where talking about how to help Nigerians, those heading to Poland, those heading to Romania. And uh, so many people, wonderful people, they gave a lot of suggestions, you know, Nigerians at Warsaw. Uh, but we haven't really heard much about uh, from Nigerians in, uh, in Romania. We tried to communicate with the embassy. Uh, but we couldn't get feedback from them, sent them emails, but they've not responded. Uh, Sorry. Recently, Sorry. we got an information on Twitter. I don't know how legit it is uh, that we should send their passport a number and their names and uh, a passport data page to them. I don't know what they want to do with that, but we have been waiting. They, they're, they're on the train now. It's a 14-hour train from Kiev to, uh, to Rakiv. Uh, right, so they can... Yeah, let, let's hope they, they let's hope they get to the, the destination, you know, safely and, and soundly. But uh, let me also bring back uh, Dr. Tadeo Motosha, who um, is on the other end, uh, because we talked about some people who are waiting and being there on standby, hoping that people will cross over into Poland so that they can offer help. Um, Dr. Tadeo Motosha, again, let me just uh, get an understanding as it is now. How many people have crossed over, and what is the situation? you know, yeah. on the Polish side, what are the plans being made by Nigerians to ensure that those who cross over have a safe and a soft landing? Yeah, thank you, Matthias, uh, Victor. Uh, between the last time I spoke, that's like 10, 15 minutes ago, a, a number of people have reached me again, and I have um, updated information that about seven people have been able to cross over the border. Uh, um, they are currently, and of course, like you would imagine, uh, there will be need for some, you know, documentation. You know, there will be need for. I'm afraid we're losing him uh, due to internet. But uh, Victor Bamshai, give us a background. Like, like, like you said earlier on, uh, what's the situation? How is it easy Which to from move? From our we're end, there. we're already. Yes. Hello? 
Uh, yeah, we lost you for a bit. Uh, let me just uh, hold you there for a bit and just uh, get uh, some thoughts from uh, Dr. Victor Bamishai. Um, you were there during the Crimea situation. How was the movement? Uh, and what do you think Nigeria should be doing now? Um, you know, to be safe and you know to be in in a good. In, I mean, to be safe and to be in good condition uh, as all of this is happening. Yes. Uh, let me say for Dr. Tade is traveling to the border right now so that he can uh, you know be able to manage things. Uh, from the front. So that's why he's having network glitches as he travels. Uh, but like I said earlier, uh, this is a much different situation from uh, the Crimean incident because we didn't, we're, we're traveling from the peninsula to the mainland. But right now you have people traveling from all over the country uh, to different parts of the border or at least border cities. And so the way to be safe at this time is uh, to get yourself within groups of people, don't stay isolated, uh, during the Crimean and the Donbass, uh, Donbass is the Donetsk region and the Lugansk, when they were uh, initially separated, we had cases of Nigerian students being kidnapped. You know, they came to their homes and kidnapped them. And uh, it, it took a lot of uh, negotiations and uh, diplomacy uh, to get them released, but that was not without torture. Uh, so we wouldn't want a repeat of that. And so if you are in groups of people, it's much easier uh, you know, to, to, to signal and also to be safe. And please stay within uh, houses or apartments that have bunkers. And so this is why it's wise uh, to stay within hostels. There are many hostels, uh, most of the hostels in Ukraine uh, are equipped with bunkers and bunkers are known to be uh, bomb uh, proofed. Uh, so right now uh, you, you, it's advisable, like I said, to communicate. Uh, and, and be within groups, especially knowing that many Nigerian students in Ukraine do not actually speak the local language, uh, which can be Russian or Ukrainian uh, many times. And uh, at this point in time, uh, don't if, if you are going to uh, go to the border, please don't go alone. Uh, make sure you are in groups of people and make sure you uh, at least have good, uh, you know, battery life at the time you are going to start. Uh, because it can be quite a strenuous journey of you know trekking many times for uh, between two to four hours. Some people have even reported uh, themselves to have trekked for seven hours. So for whatever might be happening, you want to uh, have you know your device on to be able to communicate uh, to people right. who who are. Oh, okay. All right. So let me hold you there for a bit um, and go back to the studio where Amarachi. And um, Millicent, uh, of course, are uh, giving more updates, you know, from their end. Um, Amarachi, this is what has been going on on the Zoom Hangout. And of course, uh, there are also more messages streaming on our Facebook um, Live as it is right now and also on the YouTube. Um, but um, at, at this point, I will just have to hand over back to you guys in the studio. And of course, this will continue so people can also uh, still join us. Uh, it's live on our Facebook and it's also live on YouTube as well. It's back to you guys in the studio. All right. Uh, again, uh, uh, so that was uh, just a, a cutting into the television side. Um, we're back on the Zoom to continue again. Um, so, um, Dr. Tade, you were saying something earlier on, and uh, Victor was trying to explain that because of the trip you're making, so internet is kind of breaking here and there. Um, so, yes. just give us a, a, an update again. You mm -hmm. said as of now, about seven people have crossed into the border. Yes, about seven people have been able to cross into the border, although they are being held at the border control facility, you know, as you would expect, you know, you can't just come in and they let you go right away into the city. So they needed to be processed. And uh, from the information we have, um, there's going to be about a um, couple of, you know, hours of sort of um, documentation, um, you know, uh, maybe some kind of interview as well before they have been allowed, you know, to leave. But what we're doing on our part is to, you know, um, crowdsource or gather addresses where, you know, these people can, the addresses they can provide you know, um, so that the immigration can let them go. Because from what we understand, they might, they already made a provision to have a camp, you know, at the, somewhere around the border area where people can actually be, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 kept for a while, you know. So, so what we're doing is I'm two, about two hours away now from, from the border. 
Um, once we get there, I would hopefully have more information on what's going on, and then we'll be able to, you know, uh, provide more information. But we are, like I said, we are we're on top of it. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be getting some buses down to the border to be able to help those that have been fully processed. You know, we don't know exactly how long it's going to take. But for, but, but for sure, um, we, we, I understand some people have been there since yesterday night and they haven't been released, you know, so when we do not have access to them, um, you know, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep um, you know, passing across whatever information you have, we have from our end, yeah. All right, awesome. Um, uh, Dr. Timothy, let me uh, come back again to you. Um, again, are you also um, kind of um, stuck where you are? Uh, but what are your supplies like? How are you going to survive? Are you alone where you are right now? Okay, currently I'm not alone. We are three of us that are here. We kind of stayed behind for two reasons, to help those that are also coming in and to make sure that everyone is out before we leave. So it would be like kind of the last people to go. But we are stocked up. We have supplies actually, because like it's been a long time coming. So in a way, we've kind of prepared for it. And in my locality, some stores are still opened. So there's still the possibility of getting things as we speak now. Because like I said earlier, if the city is calm, city is calm. But yeah, that's the situation with food currently. Uh, all right, very well. Um, Engineer Zeke, so what's the situation on your part? I mean, uh, you tried to say something earlier on, but uh, I'm not sure we got that part. Um, how are you surviving? What's the situation? Can you go out to get uh, supplies or what exactly? How stocked up are you? Um, okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. My connection uh, is really bad over here. So I had to come down to the basement. So right now I'm in the basement. So as, as, as of food, um, I just have a little that will sustain me just for a few days. But I, I'm just hoping that this doesn't continue because I don't know. I, I don't know if I can go to the magazine to get stuff because I've not been out for uh, since yesterday. I've not been out, so I don't know if the if the magazines are still, if the shops are still are still working. So so that's it. That's I just hope that everything just uh, will be fine so we could go back to our uh, our normal life. Yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, awesome. Uh, a fortune on your own part. Um, have you heard from your sister? Any any news? Was the update? Uh, have they gotten to their, their 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 destination? I know you said it's a fourteen hour train ride, but um, is there any means of communication as it is right now? Yes, uh, we've been communicating with her. Uh, uh, there's still internet, so uh, we've been communicating with them. I, the last time we spoke, um, I asked her to send her details to the Nigerian embassy at Romania because they requested for it. Um, hopefully uh, they will communicate with uh, uh, the Romanian government so that Nigerians coming in, you know, will be able to be processed and brought in uh, because Indians, uh, from what we hear, Indians already set up camp at the border so that uh, there are people coming in, you know, can be processed quickly and uh, taken to shelter. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, the Nigerian embassy is working on something like that too, you know, so that they can receive uh, Nigerian students heading towards Romania. Uh, okay, so has there been any contact? Uh, what was it like? What's the contact with, uh, I mean, because it seems uh, the, the, the center of attraction has been Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Has there been any form of communication you know which you which which you actually mentioned earlier on but has there been any form of communication with now sister countries i mean border countries uh victor obama dr obama actually listed some but your sister is heading to ukraine now what's been the form of communication i uh, mean between you or your sister if she's maybe not traveling alone uh you know which those in romania be it maybe nigerians in romania or even the embassy in romania Yes, um, the embassy in Romania, I've been trying to call them, uh, but we weren't able to reach them. So we sent emails uh, on their website. We got their, um, their email address and we sent them emails concerning the situation and all that. And uh, I reached out to a friend that was in Romania some years ago, uh, but uh, he left Romania. So he's trying to um, uh, 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 fix me up with someone that is uh, in Budapest right now. Uh, but um, 
we are still like waiting for them to at least get to the border so we'll know the next stage because uh if they can't pass through the border then all these arrangements make no meaning so uh i think the most important thing now is uh, the nigerian embassy actually going there you know being there or communicating with and the Romanian government, those, the border patrol, you know, communicating with them and giving them, uh, should I say, an instruction to let Nigerians in, at least to transit from there back home, back to Nigeria. Uh, all right, let's hope that um, all of this uh, contacts you dig in and calling, and let's hope that, uh, you know, it brings about, um, you know, positive uh, re results. But um, uh, let me again come back to um, Timothy. Uh, Timothy, uh, what's the situation like? What's the um, embassy saying? And we're also hearing um, reports that people are being conscripted into the um, into the army because we understand uh, people from the ages of 18, but between the ages of 18 and 60 are not being allowed to leave the country. Um, what's the situation? Are they truly conscripting even Nigerians into the Ukrainian army to defend the sovereignty of the country? Okay, so for the issue of conscription, they are not at the moment, they're not conscripting like foreigners, it's just the Ukrainian citizen. Their article doesn't provide for foreigners yet. It's still, a, it's still a very like long process. So it's for Ukrainians and currently they are also conscripting those who are able-bodied are even above the age of 60 at the moment, because they say they need reinforcement. For the embassy, we've still not had any new information. The last time we heard from them was in the morning around 10 a.m. and it was the same blank message. But since then, we've not had any information. And it's sad to say, but it's like a pattern. They always have, we always hear the same thing over and over again. Even when there was an incident in the city not too long ago, it was the same thing that happened. It was still, there was so much news on social media different blogs were calling them out till then before they sent someone to come to the leave. So we understand that these are times of war and, but mm -hmm. the communication is not as fluid as it can be. And we are hoping that maybe they are watching this and maybe they are also trying because the, their excuse was that the embassy of Lviv serves about eight countries and that they are stretched. That they don't have enough staff. That was what they said. That's why that they don't communicate as fast as they should. I don't know if that's the case. But if they can do something, it will help the people that are stranded and it will help like moving things faster. Like we said about the Indians, we heard that they've set up like, like camps in about six different border crossings like that. So we don't know how true it is, but like this is like forward, like it will not get the people to be calm and there'll be less panic because they you know that, okay, once I get there, there's something. Now, some people, while we were speaking, some people were calling me now and asking me that, okay, where we are on our way, what should we do? I couldn't give them a very certain answer. I said, okay, just still come. And when you arrive, we'll figure out what to do. But what I can tell them is that we just hope that the border still remains open. That's the only thing I can say. Because now we're hearing that it's not as if Poland is refusing Nigeria. It's that on the Ukraine end, they're not letting them enter the EU because they say that you cannot enter without like an EU, like without a visa. That's the problem in some of the border crossings.